which is very prevalent in many countries in many cases. Uh, it, it seemed that that would be a voice that would be very fresh and very important uh, to listen to. Uh, we will be hearing from many of the famous rethinking scientists uh, over the weekend, HIV positive people, many names that are familiar to us, but we wanted the keynote speaker to be, be somebody new with new messages that I hope will inspire us in, in different ways. You can read Michael Tracy's <clears throat> biography in the brochure that you, you have, but he has a, a very distinguished career as a, a, a scholar and practitioner of, of journalism with a great interest in the uh, American injustice system, which of course is very similar to the injustice systems of many countries around the world. So I would like to welcome Michael Tracy to the stage to give his keynote speech. Please welcome him. Thank you. Have a little juice to begin with. Um, thank you. Those only remarks. Um, it's true. When I was um, coming in, there's a gentleman, where is he? He was there, who kind of said in a very polite way, like, who the hell are you? Um, <laughs> it was a good question. Um, and because uh, while a number of years ago I was thinking about uh, the whole HIV AIDS issue, to be honest, uh, I moved on into looking at other areas. In my mind, areas that, were, that are conceptually related. In fact, if you Google my name, you won't find many uh, mentions of HIV AIDS, but you'll find a hell of a lot of mentions of uh, one Jean Bonnet Ramsey, who I've spent many years looking into, and in fact have made three documentaries uh, that were shown uh, both in the UK and the US, and actually about 30 other countries. Um, I'm not going to touch too much on Jean Bonnet, but I say conceptually, um, the issue that I want to talk about tonight, which is really a kind of, uh, is it basically a, a personal reflection? Uh, it was interesting to be invited to give this speech, slightly unnerving. Uh, for reasons I'll explain in a moment, but um, it was interesting to go back um, and look at what I'd written before many years ago, 15 years ago, basically. And it was rather um, satisfying um, to look at what I'd written and actually still agree with it. Um, now, before I start my talk, I want to uh, make the point, normally when I speak, when I give public lectures, I speak from notes. Um, and... Um, I, it's just much more, I'm more, you know, it's just something that I find more comfortable. I'm not very good at reading text, so do please bear with me. But I thought, um, I thought, okay, Tracy, you've agreed to do this, and there'll be people who will want to trash you for doing it. Uh, that kind of goes with the patch. But that doesn't mind, I don't mind, you know, I, I've been trashed many times over the whole Ramsey thing, and I got extremely um, thick skin, and Brits, uh, Brits uh, like a fight. Um, but I decided that uh, rather than just talking from notes, what I would do is I would actually prepare a text um, which I'm going to read. So do please uh, bear with me on this. But um, I, wanted to, I, wanted to be, I wanted to feel that I got it right, um, uh, anticipating criticisms that may come down, down the road. So when, um, when Peter Duesberg um, uh, emailed me and asked if he could nominate me uh, to give this opening address, I was, I was kind of blown away um, and surprised and pleased and honored. And he said, would I give some welcoming remarks? And so without further ado, welcome. <laughs> um, I should add right up front uh, that there's also certain trepidation in accepting the invitation, honored though I was since I knew that there would be some serious scientists present and writers and journalists who have spent their careers studying science. The closest I ever came to doing science was in grammar school in England. We had to take chemistry. I remember how proud my mother was when she bought me a lab coat, all nice and white and crisp. It didn't make much difference, and I never really did get much beyond learning how to light the Bunsen burner, and even that was a bit dodgy. 
I, don't, I didn't do very well. In fact, the one and only thing I re really remember from that time was that our teacher, Dr. Keith, the school was ever so proud that he had a doctorate, or at least he told them he had, um, was in fact a sadist who liked to flog boys with a rather large cane. But it was a Catholic school run by the De La Salle Christian Brothers, so that was about part of the course. You know, it's kind of part of the curriculum. Um, <laughs> as a media scholar, and more recently as a documentary filmmaker, what I explore are the ways in which the mass media come between us and reality. Indeed, begin to construct interpretations of reality, which we then act on, and as it were, make real. It is and was here that my whole interest in how we, the society, came to think about HIV, uh, HIV AIDS lies. For me, the story began late on a Sunday evening at my home in Boulder, Colorado, early 1990s, maybe 1992. Insofar as I'd ever thought about AIDS, it was in the conventional ways of HIV infection, unsafe sex, death, we're all at risk, condom mania, dramatic TV commercials of crashing headstones, and the general sense that sexual excess was a shortcut to the cemetery. Um, that any sex, excessive or not, was like to have the direst consequences. It was about midnight. I'd just returned from a trip abroad. The house was quiet a rather fine glass of Chablis in hand. I was doing what I normally do in front of the TV. I was surfing the channels. I had on a discussion program hosted by the black journalist, Tony Brown. I lingered, and what I heard began to fascinate me. The discussion was of AIDS, and the fact that the HIV hypothesis was, as one of the participants put it, dead. It was one of those moments that remain etched on the memory. The interviewee, I recall, had this round face, her parted on the side. I seem to recall also he was wearing a greenish tweed jacket, v-neck sweater and tie. And he wore these Harry Potter glasses. In fact, it occurs to me, he wore Harry Potter glasses before Harry Potter wore Harry Potter glasses. So I don't know if Mr. Lauritsen's here. Is, is he here? It's an extreme pleasure to meet you. <laughs> The specific discussion was about iatrogenic medicine in the context of AIDS, that the treatments were more dangerous than infection, that AZT in particular was a killer. John started talking about AIDS in ways which I had never heard, and which I found puzzling, but somehow riveting, and to be honest, convincing. I may not be a scientist, but I have a very good nose for a good argument. I realized that he was challenging one of the most powerful beliefs of the age, that the HIV virus was deadly, democratic in that we're all at risk and it, should be the and it would be the next pandemic rivaling those of pre-modernity. I also heard something that startled me. In the process of moving to the US, I'd had two AIDS tests, one for an insurance policy, the other for the INS as part of my application for permanent residency. The INS test is part of a general inquiry into one's fitness to live within the Republic and includes answering questions as to whether one is now or has ever been insane. <laughs> Only the feds, eh? Only the feds. Um, uh, whether one plans overthrow by force of arms the elected government. And, this was priceless, whether one plans to profit from the proceeds of prostitution. <laughs> and I had to answer these questions for my kid children, who were then aged <laughs> 5, 4, and 18 months. So I didn't know if they were insane, or whether they would have nefarious lives later. Um, I will remember the curious feeling of waiting for the results of the tests. That weird rewind of life, uh, you know, that night. Um, um, I was nervous. If this test came back positive, that was it. Life was over, family destroyed, the grim reaper hovering there, one more victim of the plague. And we would have been deported so that I could die my miserable death back home in the UK. <laughs> Knowing what I know now, I should have been a lot more nervous. The test came back negative, great sigh of relief, life could, life could go on. As I sat there on that Sunday evening, I heard that the test was not testing for the virus, it was testing for antibodies to the virus. 
To test positive was to be told that your body had... The, I know I'm saying, by the way, something you all know, but this is, was a revelation for me. To test positive was to be told that your body